Hi everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to configure FTDV using the FDM local manager to port forward RDP traffic, right? Port 3389 to a RDP client behind the FTDV in my cloud. Okay, so let's take a quick look at how the setup looks like. Okay, so if you have been following me on the FTD video, uh, you will see a similar setup like this already done. So in this setup, what we're going to do is to allow my Windows 10 client uh, that is at my home lab to route through the internet, going into the KVM, through the IP table, forwarded to the FTDB inside interface I'm oh, sorry outside interface and then there will be a net translation right that translate the access internally on the FTDV to allow me to RDP to this uh, Windows 11 client actually uh, I've changed this to Windows 11 client uh, on IP address 192.168.200 so I sorry, one seven two dot sixteen dot two dot two hundred. Okay, so that's how the flow will look like. So let's quickly go over to my FTDV. Uh, I've already allowed management of the FTDV uh, or or the FDM through the internet, so we don't really have to go to my VNC anymore. Okay. Okay, so let's start a new browser. Let's just make sure that my browser is, you know, uh, it's viewable, right? So let's. Okay, so I've set up my IP table to only allow certain IP address to connect. So you know, if you can't connect to this, or if you're trying to connect to this, uh, you know, uh, you will not be able to connect. Uh, and please. Do not hack my cloud server. <laughs> Appreciate that, right? So, you know, let's go to my firewall. Let me key in admin and then the password, right? Okay. So traffic isn't too bad for my home, so that's a good thing. Let's just make it a little bit smaller so we can see more things at the same time. Hopefully you can still see my screen. Okay, so now the first thing what we are do is to go to policy and create a net rule, right? Uh, or net policy. So there are actually two ways to configure the net uh, policy, right? And uh, I've seen both ways uh, that is mentioned uh, on the block uh, externally so both way actually works right you just need to figure out how do you configure the parameter properly right so if you're familiar with IB tables the logic is pretty much the same right so ignore those that says that the configuration you know uh, Cisco is trying to make it very tough it's actually not right it's just understanding the logic uh, so if you start off with IB tables or any other you know firewall that you use the logic is fundamentally the same right so we're going to create a net rule to net rdp right uh, from out to in right so choose your naming convention that you're comfortable with uh, for youtube video i'm not going to bother too much about it right so now the tricky part comes in when you are configuring the original packet and the translated packet now if you are using the logic similar to IP tables then what I'll do is to uh, select the interface as outside right so that's usually how IP tables does the mapping right the packet coming in from outside okay that is uh, mapped to the interface right so if we are doing port address translation uh, actually let me just change this to pet right so it's a static pet for address translation from the outside interface uh, and we're gonna listen on port 
RDP port. So by default, I think the basic configuration doesn't have uh, RDP port uh, defined, right? So I've added in the RDP port myself. You can just easily create that uh, based on the previous tutorial of how to create objects, right? And then the inside interface is the destination IP address. We are trying to access my Kali machine that is behind, right? My, that is behind my inside interface or my internal LAN. And then the RDP traffic is the destination port is the RDP port, right? So this tutorial will do a direct basic mapping without any custom port involved. The next tutorial, I'll show you how to do custom SSH login, right? But for this one, it is RDP. So do take note, right? So if you are configuring based on the usual logic, uh, similar to IP table, is that your source interface will be uh, outside, right? And then your address, right? You want to configure is the destination address, right? So the IP address hitting the source interface, uh, which is outside interface uh, um, for the destination address. You configure the destination port, right? Which is uh, 3389 for RDP. And then the internal IP you want to translate to is in of course in the inside interface you define a object for the Kali host right it is a Kali host IP address and then the destination port which is the oops sorry uh, my apologies it should be my RDP host right uh, yeah, the Windows 11 RDP host, right? So sorry for that. Uh, so this should be the RDP uh, Windows 11 host, okay? So once that's done, just click OK. So that is the first part, creating the net rule. You should have a net rule that maps outside interface to the inside interface through RDP. Now, next one you want to do is to add the access rule to allow outside to inside RDP client, right? Or RDP server, depending on how you see that, right? And then configure allowing outside, right? Uh, you can restrict the network or to make things easy for a start, just allow any network, any ports coming into the inside zone okay this is where you want to be uh, more specific right routed uh, or translated to the windows 11 rdp host which the net rule will take care of that and then the default rdp port right and click on okay so once that's done just click okay so if you understand the logic if you've been doing you know file configuration for a long time you know it's pretty straightforward now if you're new uh, either to network security or Cisco FTD. These are the couple of things that you just want to get yourself familiar. The documentation now, if you are new, can be quite uh, daunting because it goes through the logic behind dynamic uh, pad, dynamic net, static pad, <laughs> static net, right? So it goes through a lot of uh, trying to explain to you how the whole net Thing works uh, through the FTDV, so it might become quite daunting if you are new, right? But if you are seasoned, you've been doing this for a long time, then it is a walk in the park for you. Okay, so let's make sure that it's deploying. Okay, uh, you can review the changes and then click deploy now. So it takes about a um, couple of minutes to deploy, depending on how busy is your machine and network. So while it's deploying, that's uh, just re quickly review the. Uh, objects right so you can see we have uh, or I have created a couple of new objects right the Windows RDP uh, machine which is you know 172.16.2.200 and then uh, I have also created a port uh, where's my RDP port yeah right here right the RDP port that is 3389 okay so you know once you are, once you get the hang of it, it's really really fast, right? It takes about five minutes for me to configure a rule, and then uh, you know 
or less right and then uh, for the deployment to be done right so um, deployment takes a bit of time like I said you know I wish that uh, things can be faster but based on the architecture it seems that they go through quite a fair bit of check on the back end to make sure that the configuration is correct right so I'm going to pause the video and let it complete uh, it should be very soon now okay uh, once the deployment is done as usual you'll see a green tick and then nothing to deploy click OK and uh, that's all right uh, connection is done we'll go through the logging and monitoring in the future but let's just go to the events and you know see if the connections get speak up right uh, you have to configure the logging right to reduce the noise and the number of logs uh, but you know we'll cover that in another tutorial right so I have set up uh, a remote desktop connection to my uh, cloud um, server using uh, port center port 3389 right so I don't have to change anything let's launch and you can see right I'm able to connect to my RDP machine behind the firewall so then click continue accept the certificate we can actually see that there is connection coming in uh, okay from 245 you can see not too sure where all these things are going to uh, but let's ignore that for now right and you can see that I am actually connected to my um, machine RDP machine in behind my firewall so if you have seen my previous tutorial you'll remember that my IP address is actually 172.16.2.200 okay and uh, that's it right so it's risky to expose your RDP uh, port directly uh, to the internet putting it behind a firewall helps now adding rules to allow specific network um, to access your RDP server further reduces the risk right there's no bullet foolproof 100% safe way of protecting your servers as uh, technology evolve and you know new feature comes out new bugs comes out so it's very very tough to be 100% protected but doing all these things you know increases from 50% if you don't have any firewall in place to maybe 90 odd percent you know when you have a firewall and uh, you know network access control in place right so that's pretty much uh, what I have for this very very simple tutorial to show you how easy it is to configure port forwarding uh, through a firewall and it's very very useful especially if you are using uh, the firewall to protect your cloud infrastructure as we move to hyperscalers and whatnot, right? So, um, Cisco Next Gen Firewall, right? Secure, file uh, secure Firewall Threat Defense FTD uh, has the various modules that are available, right? For whether AWS, uh, uh, Azure, and I believe there are a few more, um, you know, uh, instances that you can get from the cloud marketplace, right? Uh, very similar uh, to a lot of the provider out there but the key thing is when we when we move to CDO you'll see that the importance of a cloud management UI that allows you to manage all these instances and uh, configuring the various policies across your various touch point right so as your environment grows right um, remembering manually remembering and configuring rules individually can become quite uh, taxing right so hope this tutorial is useful and stay tuned for the next one where i'll go through the uh, ssh custom port forwarding thank you and stay safe